How you doing? I'm Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures and in this video I'm going to show you some tips and ideas on how to film your own hunts. I've been doing this for a very long time so I've learned a lot from mistakes and trials along the way and hopefully some of these ideas will help you be effective in filming your own hunts. So I've set up a tree stand. I'm going to climb in here as if I was in a tree but uh, I'm just going to show you this right here in this setup right now so I won't have my harness system on for this example. Now most people are filming themselves bow hunting and, or you know you could be filming yourself gun hunting but it's very popular especially in bow hunting and I have learned a lot from trial and error in setting up the video camera arm which most of you are probably planning to use to film your own hunts which by the way I just finished filming a video on top 10 things that you would use in self-filmed hunting I'll provide a link for that in the description section of this video in case you want to check that out as well. Although those are the top 10 things, you don't need all 10 to get started. But let me show you how to some tips on setting up the video camera arm. Most video camera arms require a ratchet strap of some type for the setup process. So I've put a lot of thought into this in order to one, maximize my setup, do it as quick and efficiently as possible, but most importantly, as quiet as possible. Now being right-handed, I draw the bow holding my left hand. So I typically want the video camera arm on the right hand side of the tree. Because of that, everything I do in setting up the strap revolves around that. Even the way that I slide it through the video camera arm. So let me show you that now, why I do it the way I do and how effective it is. Here I am on my tree stand. Again, I'm only two feet off the ground, which is why I'm not wearing a harness system. But let me show you what I do for setting this up. Now, as I mentioned, I'm, I shoot holding the bow with my left hand. So I want the video camera arm on my right hand so I can hold my bow, get as much video footage as possible, and then release for the time of the shot. When it comes to the ratchet strap, I want this facing this way on the other side of the tree for the ease in setting up and taking down, but also for the least amount of noise in setting up. In order for me to feed this strap through properly and get that angle, I need to feed this through with the hook part facing down through the video camera arm. Because this is going to come around and hook into this strap the way this particular ratchet strap works. So even the direction your strap is when you feed it through the video camera arm does make a difference. So I pay attention to that when I'm getting started. What I like to do, because this is a little awkward, is I'll actually hold this a little bit under my left arm. I'll feed the strap through, and then I'll put it around the back of the tree. So once I get it around the tree, I'll slide it into the back of this. I'll take all the slack out. I'm still holding it with my left hand. And then I'll actually hand the strap around the back of the tree to my left hand, hold it tight, and then I'll begin to ratchet with the other hand. As you'll notice, you don't hear all the real loud clicks that the ratchet normally makes. It's because I've come up with a little technique to do this silently, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But once it's cinched up, I can let go, and now my camera arm's in place. So let me go ahead and reposition the camera you're watching with so you can see how I did that. The whole reason I went through the trouble of making sure I fed the strap through the way I did was so that I could have my ratchet positioned facing toward me in this way. So the way that I do this is I slide my hand under here and the metal clip that goes into the teeth of the ratchet that makes all the noise, I pull it toward me with my left finger and then I ratchet and let go so that it engages the teeth. And then this metal piece that also clicks over the teeth, I pull that, see if I can do this without blocking your vision. I pull it up and then I bring this back down. Then I slide my middle finger in there again, pull that metal clip back and crank. And then I pull this up and bring it back. And I do that until it's tight. Or I could just pop this, let me pop it out so you can hear the difference of what I just did. And what it sounds like, regular.
And that makes a huge difference, the quiet versus the clicking when you're in a hunting situation. One little click could scare the deer out of an area, especially if you're slipping in close to a bedding area. When I'm sitting down, I like the video camera arm to be around shoulder height so that I can see the camera easily when I'm sitting. If something's, if a doe's coming in and I'm not gonna shoot her and I just wanna get a little video footage of her, I don't have to get up, there's minimal movement, I'm able to video right here. However, when I stand up, it's still up high enough that I can see kind of down into the, the camera screen a little bit for my videoing. And this is, you know, if it was, if it was way down here, it would be hard to video, you know, I'd be bending down. But with here, I can stand up straight, I can video, and then when it's time to shoot, I can shoot. I'm holding my video camera bag, which, you know, I always carry all my cameras in here, and I like to slip it over my camera arm and let it rest right there so that my video camera equipment I can easily reach in my bag and get. I really recommend, as I said in my top 10 list video, um, using a remote for uh, your video camera. What that does is it allows you to zoom in and zoom out all one hand. Um, years ago I shot a real nice eight pointer in Illinois before I had a remote and because I wasn't sure what the deer was going to do, I had to just leave the camera zoomed out and I was waiting for him to commit one way or another to, as I was following him. I ended up getting a shot, but I was never able to zoom in because I didn't have a remote. So having a remote is really helpful and I set that up right away. A lot of people use video camera angles that, that shoot themselves while they're hunting so you can see them pull the bow back and everything. That's great and everything, but the most important angle to get with something like a POV camera is the animal you're going to shoot. Because everybody wants to see that hit, and when you're filming yourself, sometimes let's say you let go of the camera and you start to draw back, maybe it spooks and runs back 15 yards and stops and still gives you a shot. Well, you can take that shot, but your video camera might not be on it anymore. And so that's where having the POV camera comes in big. I like this kind, you wear it as a headband like this, and then you position it on, the, I position mine right behind my ear, so that when I draw my bow to shoot, the video camera is pointing right at the deer or animal, whatever I'm shooting at. Some people use the GoPros, they sit on your hat here. They're a little more awkward to me, so I don't, I don't really like using them even though I have one. I prefer, like I said, this kind. As I mentioned in my top 10 list video, Having a little um, gorilla pod like this comes in big because you can strap this to a branch nearby and video yourself and you shooting an animal. I've done that before. Um, I'll show you a little clip of that real quick. So these little gorilla pods come in nice and if you have like an extra strap or ratchet strap, you can strap this to the tree and get the angle on you while you're shooting, things like that. And if you have multiple GoPros, you can link them all to one remote and get multiple angles while you're shooting or the deer's coming in. But that also brings up an important point. I had a fan of mine talking to me one time uh, at an event, I actually was hosting a class and he came to it. And he was going to start filming his hunts that year and he was going to set up all these camera angles. And as I listened to him, I was thinking, man, you, you really are overdoing it. So he tried it that year and he ended up giving up completely. And it's because he got frustrated. He had way too many cameras trying to go all at once and they weren't all synced to like one remote. So he had to turn each one on every time and he, he didn't have any success. He couldn't get it, the deer close enough to actually get the shot. So I would say a stationary camera is, is important and then one POV pointed where you're going to shoot is secondary and very important as well. In fact, just last year I had a deer coming behind me and I was getting the camera ready on the other side of the tree and that, well let me just point this out real quick too. What I generally do is I get footage of the deer coming in and then I look at where they're going, I try to estimate where they're going, I'll even zoom out a little bit to try to make sure they're in the frame, and then I let go and I get ready for the shot. Because when I first started filming hunts, I missed a lot of opportunities because I was trying to do too much video work. So it's most important thing is getting that shot on video, and that means 
being able to let go of the video camera arm. So deer's coming in, I look at where it's going, I'll move the camera over, I'll let go, and then I'll get ready to shoot. Let me give you an example of that real quick. So I see the deer coming, I get the camera arm, I get a, just a few seconds of footage, and since the deer's already close, I just move the camera to where I need it to be for the time of the shot. Now going back to the other example I started to talk about, uh, just last year I had a deer coming behind me and so I got the video camera arm behind me on the, the tree pointed over here and then the deer spooked and ran back and it was you know stomping and doing all that and I couldn't risk moving the video camera all the way back over and getting it on the deer. So I had to rely entirely on my hat camera and I still got the hunt on video because I had that. So having both I think is really important for filming your own hunts and those are the most important. You know, if you want to get other camera angles, cameras pointing at you, that's fine too, but make sure you at least have those two covered and if the other ones get to be too much and messing it up when it's time to shoot because you, you're trying to manage too many cameras, just put them away. So that's my basic advice on filming your own hunts and I also want to say this before I close. The reason why I suggest putting it on your hat like this is because a POV camera attached to your bow vibrates so much at the time of the shot that it's really hard to see the actual arrow hit the deer. However, when you have this on your hat, even though there's a little vibration, it's not enough that you can't tell what's happening. Let me give you one little example of that of this nice eight-pointer I shot a couple years ago on public land. Mm -hmm. And I also want to point out after seeing that clip is it really helps having those knocks that light up when you shoot. And of course in the middle of the day it's not going to help you at all. So in those scenarios I like to use white fletch and I actually paint my the end of my arrows white. I actually have a video on how I make my hunting arrows. I'll provide a link for that in the description section of this one. But in those early morning and late afternoons or cloudy days having a light knock that lights up is really helpful in a hunting situation when you're trying to video it. Alright folks, that's it in a nutshell. I hope that gives you a couple ideas on how to film your own hunts and helps you get out there and be successful. Again, point the camera angle where you think the deer is going to be and then focus on time for the shot. Having that little POV on your hat is a lifesaver. Sometimes, you know, the deer will do something else. You can just forget about that one for now, your stationary camera, because you know you're getting the footage up here. Pew take that shot and then share your story with the rest of us. Put it on YouTube, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. So again, hope this has helped. Thanks for tuning in. Check out those other videos I have waiting for you and clicking on the links in the description section of this one. Until then, take care and God bless you.